Hello everybody, this is Sonia Lango and I'll be guiding you through the derivation of Kepler's second and third laws of planetary motion using the calculus of vector functions. So to start, Kepler's second law states that a line joining the sun to a planet sweeps out equal areas at equal times. So we're, to prove this, we're going to use this information right here, which was gathered from the derivation of Kepler's first law, which was presented in Stewart 2008. So to start, the variable r is used to represent our position vector, r of t. The magnitude of r is represented by r italicized. v, our velocity vector, is equal to the derivative of r, and h, which is the constant vector cross product, uh, h is used to represent the constant vector cross product of r and v. Finally, we have, we can represent our position vector r in in polar coordinate form, as seen here. So we want to sh prove Kepler's second law by showing the rate at which the area swept out is constant. So to do this, we're going to start with our constant vector h, which is equal to the cross product of r and r prime. And we can represent this in polar coordinate form, and then take the derivative of this last term. We can now take the cross product of first and the last term. This would this therefore simplifies to r squared d theta over dt times k. We can then find the magnitude which is equal to r squared d theta over dt. And we can remember we're going to use this piece of information for later so keep it in the back of your head. So to because we want to find the we want to find that the rate at which area swept out is constant we want to first find an expression for area so to do this well, let's consider this figure right here um, and this is of an elliptical orbit of a planet and we know that planets have elliptical orbits because of kepler's first law so this is an expression which um, shows the area of a sector. Um, and if we want to find the area between position vectors at two times, so like r of t0 and r of t, we can write this, exp we can write this expression like this. S so um, in this case, uh, theta 0 is the angle that r at t0 makes with the polar axis, and theta 1 is the angle that r of t makes with the polar axis. So we can find the rate at which it changes by taking the derivative of both sides, like so. And recall from before that r squared d theta over dt is equal to the magnitude of the constant vector h. So we can represent dA over dt like this. This therefore proves Kepler's second law because it shows that the rate at which A is swept out is constant, which means that a line joining the sun to the planet to a planet does indeed sweep out equal areas in equal times. So moving on to Kepler's third law, which states that the square of the period of evolution of a planet is proportional to the cube of the length of the major axis of its orbit. So I'm want to start with uh, with, the f with the few variables that we're going to be using. So we have t, which is our period of revolution, and we have 2a and 2b, which are the length of the major and minor axes, respectively. And I also want to go over some formula pertaining to the geometry of an ellipse. These are the area of an ellipse is equal to pi a b, the, fo the square of the foci of an ellipse is equal to a squared minus b squared. The eccentricity is equal to c over gm, which is also equal to c over a. And d, the directrix, is equal to h squared over c, which is also equal to a times 1 minus e squared over e. Okay, so to start, we need to find an expression for t, our period. So... Um, as you, so we want to, we can use our rate, dA over dt is equal to one half of h, to find the total area, 
and we can do this by multiplying this expression by our period t, as seen here. As mentioned previously, we also have another expression for the area uh, of an ellipse, and we can set the two equal to each other. So, so to simplify this expression, I, we're going to rearrange we're going to rearrange these three formulas right here in order to get this expression right here, this equation right here. So we are going to return. We're going to return to this to this uh, expression in a bit. So what we can do here now is isolate for t and square the whole and square both sides. And then we can simplify this expression by replacing b squared with a times h squared over gm. So this expression rearranged. <clears throat> and we get this expression right here. And this proves that, this proves Kepler's third law because it shows that the square of the period of revolution is proportional to the cube of the length of one of the major axis of the orbit. And note that we have a proportionality constant of four pi squared over gm. So we can use this information to calculate the length of the major axis of the Earth's orbit, which is 2a. So we have um, the period of the Earth's orbit around the sun, which is equal to 365.25 days. We have a gravitational constant, which is equal to 6.65 times 10 to the negative 11 newton times meter squared over kilogram squared. And we also have, and we also have the mass of the sun, which is equal to 1.99 times 10 to the 30 kilograms. So we can isolate for a. We can, and then we can sub in this information right here. Note that I converted um, our period to seconds just so that everything cancels out and our final answer is in meters. So the length of the major axis of the Earth's orbit is therefore 2.99 times 10 to the 8 kilometers. Thank you for watching.